the Claflin Hill Symphony Orchestra is preparing to open their 16th season in November. In the meantime, the folks at Claflin have been busy relocating their offices to a brand new location on Main Street. Executive Artistic Director Paul Serpine invited me down this week to give me a tour of the new location and also give everyone a preview of the upcoming concert season. Claflin Hill celebrated a milestone last season as it marked 15 successful years of existence in the greater Milford area. The group is now ready to enjoy another accomplishment as they just put the finishing touches on a brand new and improved location for its main offices. Welcome <laughs> to the new home uh, offices of world headquarters of Claflin Hill Symphony Orchestra. Um, as one of our board members said when uh, he came in here after we had got all moved in. He was like, boy, you have come a long way. I mean, it, starting out, we used to, you know, kind of operate out of, uh, you know, home office, uh, spare bedroom upstairs in my house, Claflin Street, Claflin Hill, the whole thing. Um, and that was very nice. Um, though, as people that work from home know, sometimes that can also be a little bit of a curse because you feel like you never leave work. Years ago, Ronnie Pagnini Jr., um, whose family owned the Music Nook on Main Street for generations, um, Ronnie has become something of a commercial real estate uh, man here in town. He owns a lot of properties. So years ago, he kept asking me if I'd like to have an office. I was like, I can't afford an office, and I'm fine in my house. Well, he finally dragged me into this building, 208 Main Street, the Grant Building, um, to show me an available little one-room office that he had. We moved out of my house, which was nice. Now we had a Main Street, which was kind of cool, you know? We have our name on the signage out on the front of the building, and, and it's a nice old building. And, uh, and then a couple of years later, he moved us across the hall to a slightly bigger office, two-room suite, um, and then we kind of outgrew that. Um, and this spring, couple things all happen at the same time. Um, and, and it kind of all goes together as, as like, you know, ways that people support Claflin Hill. Number one, um, our board president, Tom Wesley, who's, uh, you know, high up at the Waters Corporation, in the middle of a board meeting one night, was looking around at our sort of hand-me-down ragtag office furniture collection and said, how would you like to have newer office furniture, stuff that all kind of looks alike? And, it's like, well, it's fine, but I mean, you know, we'll, they'll have to arrange to get rid of this stuff. Um, you know, it turns out Waters is constantly renovating different office suites, and they, you know, what are they going to do with the stuff they took out? Most of it is like, you know, decades newer than what we were sitting in. Um, so he got them to donate um, a whole office suite worth of furniture. So that was nice. I went to talk to our landlord, Ronnie, you know, about this and, you know, certain things I was going to need to ask him to be able to do in order to bring this stuff in. And he said, you know, I was wondering if you'd like to move upstairs because I have a whole, you know, uh, frontage with windows office suite and it's empty and it might it'd be really nice for the symphony to have that as an office space. So it's like, all right. And, and mind you, he's doing this still at that same you know, donation level rental fee. I called up Scott Kaplan over at Benjamin Moore and he donated all the paint to Claflin Hill. So that didn't cost us any money either. You know, so I mean, it's, it's kind of nice. You know, Waters donates furniture. Benjamin Moore donated all the paint. Our landlord is like practically ensuring that we have a nice, you know, kind of classy um, home to work in. And you know, so people walk in and it's like, yeah, this. This is the symphony office, you know. I even have my name on the door. I've, 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 you know, in all my years teaching in schools, and I've never had my name on any door, you know. This is, you know, Paul Serpine was here. The plans are already in place for the upcoming 16th season for Claflin Hill. I asked Paul to give us a rundown of what audience members can expect once the concerts begin this fall. Our opening concert, which is also kind of, always kind of like the big showpiece concert for the orchestra as far as major orchestral repertoire from, you know, the, the classic uh, symphony orchestra playlist. Um, this year it's called Rascals, R Rogues, Rascals, and Rapscallions, <laughs> which is kind of cute. 
Um, and it all started out with, uh, number one, the concert's November 14th, which is Aaron Copeland, great com American composer of the 20th century. Uh, it's his birthday. Um, he's gone past now, so he won't be having any cake, but, you know, we celebrate Aaron Copeland's birthday still on the 14th of November, and it just so happened that's our opening concert. So we're going to do the music from his ballet, uh, Billy the Kid. And then there's this Richard Strauss. He was a German composer of the 20th, late 1800s into the 20th century, died around uh, 1949. He wrote these gigantic, muscular orchestral tone poems, including, you know, everybody knows the opening uh, sounds of the movie 2001, A Space on It. That's, that's Richard Strauss, uh, Thus Spake Zarathustra. So this piece is called Till Eulenspiegel, which is, um, Till Eulenspiegel was kind of a folklore figure in German mythology or whatever. He was a prankster. We're doing Mozart's uh, overture from his opera Don Giovanni. Don Giovanni, if you, you know, read up on the storyline of that opera, he was quite a rogue. Uh, ladies man, not a nice character. Um, so that's our opening concert, November 14th. We're doing Holiday Pops, of course, in December. Um, we've moved our January concert to the first week of February, uh, partly for a couple of reasons. I mean, to see maybe January, people are still kind of like burned out from the holidays and, you know, attendance has been down at the January concert. Also, we've had some bad weather. <clears throat> You can get bad weather in February, too, so I'm not sure what this is going to do for us. But, but it also is closer to Valentine's Day. So we're doing this whole romantic kind of theme symphony concert. We're doing Tchaikovsky's Romeo and Juliet. Serge Prokofiev, Russian composer of the 20th century, he wrote a Romeo and Juliet. A Howard Hansen romantic symphony. Howard Hansen was a great American composer, same time as Copeland. And we're featuring our harpist, Mason Morton who, um, by the way, was featured with the Boston Pops Esplanade concert. His little group, uh, Serendip, this, this summer, was on stage at the Hat Shell playing with the Boston Pops as a big solo feature. My brother Matthew is an opera tenor in New York City, and his friend Jim Russell, they came and sang with us years ago. They're coming in March, we're doing an Irish-Italian program. And then at the end of the year, we're doing uh, American Dreamscapes in April. Um, you know, my original concept for this was doing a program that featured music, maybe you could call it of the greatest generation. So, you know, we're doing West Side Stories uh, Symphonic Dances, which is an amazing set of music from the, from the show. Camelot. Um, Tommy Gatorna from the Cafe Sorrento, who sings there on Saturday nights. He sung with us a, year, a couple years back. He does Sinatra um, with arrangements by Jerry Seco. So we're putting that. And we just uh, finalized a deal to do uh, a work of uh, American composer Peter Boyer. For young aspiring musicians who hope to one day step out on stage with the Claflin Hill Symphony, an opportunity is coming up next weekend to become a part of the group's youth orchestra. We're auditioning new and new students uh, on Sunday, September 13th. Um, and uh, interested families, if they have kids that are playing and would like to explore the possibility of being in a, you know, sort of higher level youth orchestra with kids from all over that really practice and work hard and, and really want to you know, play at a different level than perhaps, you know, they get day to day in their public school system. Um, they can visit ClaflinHill.org um, or, you know, email us through the website or call Claflin Hill, you know, if they have questions about it. Meanwhile, the new office location is not the only change that has taken place within the organization this summer. Partly inspired by me watching Milford TV broadcasts of the symphony when you have those back shots from behind the podium, you know, looking at the orchestra and I'm looking down at me conducting and started to notice that up top, I really don't have, you know, it's very thin up there. And I've got this ponytail wagging around in the back and I started thinking, it's starting to look a little, you know, silly. 
I'm going to keep it really close, buzzed and cropped. And it's, you know, I had that ponytail for 20 years. So this is the next 20 year look. Hey, everybody, this is Tim Coet. Make sure you check out full episodes of The Milford Informer on Milford TV. New episodes air every Friday night at 7.30 p.m. and then re-air frequently over the course of the weekend. Milford TV can be found on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 38. And if you live in the Milford area and have an idea for a news story, you can contact us at news at milfordtv.net.